Okay, you guys, we are on our way this morning to um, fulfill the very busy schedule that we have. Well, that guy's got, look at it. He must live in his truck. Um, so, today we are going, as you guys see in the schedule, it's a very uh, long day for me today. Um, we'll get lab work done this morning. Then we'll come up and see the oncologist. The sun is like... Then after that, we will um, do the three hours of chemo. And then after that, we have to see the surgeon. So, it's a long day. Um, so, some of the changes I've noticed since I've taken chemo is that my taste buds have changed. Um, everything's like taste burnt. Like everything. Only thing that doesn't really taste burnt is the um, like sweet stuff. Anything else other than that tastes burnt. Like really burnt. <laughs> it's gross burnt. Um, so it's not very, it's not something that you want to eat. Um, the sweet stuff tastes pretty good. Now that candy, whoever gave me that candy, the ginger lemon candy, I, it grew on me and my husband. <laughs> Mr. Christine likes it too. But it was really super, it's really good. So we have that, I have all my prayer stuff. I have all my candy. Um, I popped into Daisy's chat last night just to say hi before I went to bed. I didn't want to derail the, the live because I know you guys were covering um, a true crime story. So I didn't want to derail it, but I wanted to pop in and say hi and that I love you all. And thank you for the love, encouragement, support, and all the prayers. I can feel it. Um, but yeah, so today's going to be a long day, you guys. Um, no nosebleed yesterday and no nosebleed today. And I'm feeling really super good compared to what I have been feeling. But now I gotta do chemo again. So now it's like up and then I'm like, yes, this is great. And now I'm gonna back down again. But like everyone says, take it one day at a time. And just, I keep in my mind busy. That's, that's my problem. I got to keep my mind busy. So, all right. So I will let you guys know um, what the next steps are. So take this journey with me. We will be going to the hospital. We'll film little snippets and clippets. And, but I think by now you guys are kind of used to that routine of what, what the chemo consists of. Today, I'm only taking... I thought I was taking three of the um, chemicals. I'm only taking two, right? Because it's only three hours. So, but next week is four hours because then I'll have I'll be taking three of the chemi all three chemicals. So, um, so that'll be a long day too. So, anyways, I will see you in a little bit when we get to the lab and the oncologist and the chemo room and then the surgeon today okay so wish me luck thank you guys love you so much I bring every single one of you with me you give me strength you give me comfort and I appreciate every single one of you and thank you for leaving comments down below um, it tells me that you guys are watching and it's really helping people. Um, and thank you for walking the journey with me. All right, see y'all later. Bye. Okay, you guys. What did I do with that plastic baggie? Shoot. Did I stick it in my purse? <laughs> I don't even know what I did with the plastic bag now. Did I stick it back in here? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay.
Okay, you guys. <laughs> Guess what I forgot to do? Again! <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I forgot to put it on again. The numbing medicine. To put what some one subscriber said to put put cut Ziploc baggies or put cut the sorry or the Ziploc and put it in a Ziploc baggie. But guess what? I didn't do that either. <laughs> so I'm tearing off a Ziploc baggie, a little one of those little snack pack Ziploc baggies, and then I'm going to use that instead. Here's the port, that's what it looks like. It looks, it's looking better. I mean, it's sore still, but not as sore. Somebody's driving by, they're like, what the heck is this lady doing? stuff to work and I don't know why, why do they make you register online but then when you get to the hospital they make you re-register that makes no sense why do they do that like either you're going to register and you're going to keep it that way or you're just you know and you're going to take the hope that it works before I get there but yeah why do they make you they have you register online answer all the questions say you're coming all of it and then when you get there they take you they bring you to a registration table again and you got to do it all over again I'm not gonna register on ahead of time anymore I'm just gonna wait till I get to the because I get myself all stressed out and I'm gosh I gotta register I gotta do this I gotta do that and it's stressing me out so for now on I think I'm just gonna wait till I get to the hospital and register there because they make you they make you register anyway so I just don't want to sit there and have to register twice it's just odd very odd but all right you guys so I've got my medicine on Hopefully it's numb by the time I get there. They take it, they squeeze it, and then they, you guys see what they do. Um, but I guess it's better than sticking that, that in your vein. Chemotherapy, it destroys all the immunity cells that you have. But also, if you don't have the port, it also messes with your veins that the medicine is going through. Um, the other day I was reading some of the procedures that the doctors and the lab have to go through when they mix it because they mix it right at that moment. Once I get in the chair then that's when the nurse orders the medicine and they have to wear, wear like SWAT gear or something um, because that's how toxic the chemicals are and um, if it spills over from outside of your veins into your body it can cause damage so when you're using and just to have a regular IV every single time you risk that chance of contamination outside of your vein from the chemotherapy um, and I think that's why they always recommend the port because the port kind of isolates it and then pushes it through your vein. There's no way for it to um, come out of 
the vein and into your bloodstream. I mean, not your bloodstream, but your outside of your body. So, um, anybody that is getting ready to do chemotherapy and you have a choice of port or no port, get the port. I know it's scary. Nobody wants a port. Nobody. Trust me, nobody wants a port, but it's going to save you so much time, so much pain and heartache. Um, once it's healed, um, you know, you don't even know it's there. I still am on that healing process, but it's getting way better. Uh, yeah, they got to squeeze it, stick the needle in, but then that's it. You, there's not really a whole big bunch of pain about it, except for that just that one moment they stick it in. But if you do your IV through your vein every single time, they have to dig for it. They have to push that thing. I mean, I feel like that probably is worse than having the port. So, in my opinion, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, but in my opinion, in my preference, I, I would recommend getting the port for anyone who is starting on new chemotherapy that's my recommendation just don't forget to put on the numbing cream on the way there or before you get there put it on when you get home put it, or when you get when you're getting ready but yeah that's important don't forget the numbing cream all right so love you all and see you when we get there Do you currently have any numbing cream in your port? I do. Okay. Has it been on at least 20 minutes or so? Yeah. Perfect. I'll get my stuff ready and then I'll get wiped off. Okay. I'll we'll let it sit on the, just a couple minutes longer while I do it. Yeah. Well, I actually forgot to put it on and we live when there's 45 minutes to an hour away, so I'm oh. in the car. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to put it on right now. I don't know why I forget that every time. I mean, I just, I guess the routine kind of thing. Yeah. Some people say they don't leave the house without it, and every time they get in the car, they used to feel like they have to put it on. Really? Others, people say they don't even use it. They, they, they don't, don't even use it? use it? Mm hmm It's about half an hour. Some people say they have access, but oh my yeah, gosh. Now, nowadays it's <laughs> oh, I wonder what it feels like without it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Did it, they don't play in hers? Nope. <laughs> really? Yeah, one guy said he never used it a day in his life that I have earlier, and he said he doesn't feel it, but everyone's probably different. I feel like I would feel it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would feel that way, too. Right. I'm a big baby. Yeah. I'm probably one of the biggest babies you've ever been seen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a good thing you have it, then. Yeah. Oh, well, your part looks great. Yeah, it's almost healed, except oh for there's, gosh. like, a little... See that little nubbin right there? Is that glue? Or no. Like, what is it? A stitch, maybe? No, but see it, feel it sticking out? Barely. Yeah, I mean, it's not open or anything. It looks great. I think it's just extra of the skin, like when they kind of stitch it together or glued it, it's just a little bit of skin hanging off of what it looks like. But it looks okay. It looks amazing. Good, okay. Yeah, the doctor said he did a really good job. He said it's in there good. Yeah, and it's in and looks great. You don't really have much glue on there either, which is good. I try to keep it yeah. like, clean. <laughs> That's the hardest part, part for people is not picking that glue off and all yeah. that stuff but I use a lot of natural soaps too I don't use any okay. chemical soaps yeah and that's what I usually um it could it's it great the natural soap it doesn't have any you know uh what do you call it like preservatives mm -hmm. and stuff in it yeah the sulfates or yes that stuff. It's, just, it's like triple shea yeah. butter soap I use that native soap which doesn't have any kind of gun in there, but I feel like the smell doesn't last as long as like, I know. I like, you get that sm nice, good smelling soap, and then it's gone. <laughs> You're like, what is the point? Yep. But yeah, what, you got that place two weeks ago? Uh, mid December? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I, I expected it to be bruised or something. Really? Wow. Your 
you're doing something right. Yes, it's the soap. <laughs> <laughs> it's the soap. <laughs> Maybe the alcohol wipe? Yeah, that core prep sometimes. Ah. I try to get it to dry fully. Oh, that hurts. It it's, hurts. it's burning a little. But that's all right. I'll give it a minute before it Like, goes. I'll fiddle with it. <laughs> like, it's, it's right in the middle. We, it's in good. Okay. Yes. And if it wasn't where it was supposed to be, we wouldn't get any blood. Okay. But let me draw these labs real quick then. Okay. Because, yeah, it's fresh and beautiful. Yeah, he said he, he got it. It was good. He said I have really good veins. But, yeah, but you know what surgeon did it? But he was really, and he was funny as could be too. Hmm. He was joking and laughing, and oh, oh my gosh! Even when he gave me the sedative or the what do you the what's the the twilight medicine? Yeah. Um, I he I could still remember us joking around and laughing in there the whole time. Oh my gosh! He was funny. They probably have a trip with that, like people in that twilight zone, just like oh, yeah. some whatever. And yeah. Who knows what that means? I remember what talking to him. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. So how does that feel? Good. It feels beautiful. Okay. I think it was just that core prep from the actual stick and the needle. Yeah. Because the yeah, outline is flush and green. We'll put this on. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, but he was nice. I mean, I would recommend, highly, highly recommend him. He was just, he was really fun. He didn't make it, you know, because this is having cancer and having to put a cord in. That's kind of yeah. scary. Yep. Well, that's good. Yeah. I'll have to look him up and see. Yeah. I'm curious. Recommending. Yes, because that is, if I could have port, all ports like that, I would be happy. Oh, I don't know. Make that my boobs are <laughs> Flash people. I did. That's all I got to that for. She'll look at it. That one lady, the one lady that should put that. Hey, Yeah, I think it might be, uh, it might be too. I think it's a library, yeah. Good. How are things? Good. Good. I found some new candy. What'd you get? Oh, I like those actually. Those are good. So, Somebody yeah. sent these to me. Yeah, those, those are good. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. Yeah. Do you want to help? Uh, yeah. It does. But when I first took the first one, I was You're like, like what the heck yeah. is this? <laughs> not what I said. Yeah. But yeah. now I'm like addicted to it. Yeah, no, they're good. They even have them like Chinese or Indian restaurants or things really? like that. Yeah. So I, I love it like now. I, I'm like a spice guy, so I don't mind it. Oh. So, yeah. Somebody sent them to me. They are like in, come in like a two and a half pound, pound and they're called the, yeah. the Prince of something. All right, it's good. Good stuff. I'm not a spicy kind of person. <laughs> but these You're things, to be. I am addicted to them. That's good. That's yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you're probably starting to feel a little bit of some taste changes now. Yeah, I think things yeah. burn, she said. I mean, Everything burn. tastes burned. Except oh, sweet stuff. Okay. Oh. Except for, yeah, except for sweet stuff. Sweet stuff, stuff. okay. That she usually don't like. Like, like, I mean, like, like everything Like all meat just tastes burned. Everything burn. tastes burned. Burn. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Is that normal? It can be. Everyone's a little bit different in terms of their taste buds, you know. So mm -hmm. I've heard some people say things taste that tasted sweet, taste sour, sour taste sweet, metallic taste. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the biggest one I think a lot of people have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone's a little bit different. So. Nosebleeds I heard as well. Yeah. How bad? Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I think it's like like just a runny nose mm -hmm. and it's like not. Nah, it's it just pours out. Pouring right. out. But then okay. it stops really quick. It stops like quickly. clots okay. pretty quickly. Good, okay. You like hold your nose. Okay. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and it's otherwise okay. Yeah. Okay. So and I don't cool. know if it's the chemo or if it's just be the weather, but I've never ever had issues like that. And, and yeah, and I'm almost fifty years old. So. I'll tell you what I think it is, you know. So with the, you know, the chemo, you know, right after your blood counts will drop, and then go back up again. Right around here is when your platelets are mm. dropping. I thought so. Too. That stop bleeding. Yeah. So if you don't have enough, then you bleed. And you get those, please. That's really okay, so it's so, probably the platelets. It's probably platelets, yeah, taking a little dip, and they're coming back up, and then it gets back. Okay. Typically, so 
But if it ever gets, you know, like really bad or like this isn't working or, you know, you're using lots of tissues, it's not working, we can always call you in like a little nasal spray as well that will help stop it. You just kick one, not too bad. Your blood counts today look good. They're all normal. Platelets are normal. Everything looks good. Yeah. So looks like you're tolerating things. Eating, drinking, okay otherwise? Uh, like, Matt, like yesterday and today, good uh -huh. days. Okay. But... Um, and today would probably be a good day until mm. tomorrow. And until then tomorrow, tomorrow, it's like... Mm. You know, so you're predicting. You're starting to predict exactly when you're back. I'm preparing. So, yeah. yeah. So that's good. So, so that, I that have a good meal so. today because I know tomorrow I'm probably not going to eat right. or the next day or the next day. But then okay. after that, it's... Right. So it's um, roughly like three, four days where it's rough. Yeah. That or after that. A few days off. And yeah. then back at it again. Yeah. Really. So, so now you're predicting. Yeah. You know, what, what's going to happen? Figuring out it. what my body's doing with that, it. This is the hardest part of like predicting exactly when you're going to have the side effects. But it sounds like you're getting a good handle on it. Yeah. <laughs> stuff that works for you, and that's what you need to do. That's exactly what you need to do. Thank so, you. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. That's good. A lot of nausea, a lot of vomiting, anything like no that. No vomiting. Okay. Just nauseated. Nauseated. Yeah. But it only lasts for like the three days. Okay. And then like it, it lets up on that fourth day. Okay. Uh, like not where it's gone, but it's enough to where I'm like, okay, I can stomach something. Something here, yeah. yeah. And then are you taking the pills for the nausea when you're yes. feeling nauseated and they're working? Otherwise, yep. okay, good. And I've only got three left, so oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I, we can. Yeah, we'll call you in some more. Okay. Yeah. We'll call you in some more. And then closer to the end of the chemo, very close to the end, maybe three or four weeks from the end, then we'll do an ultrasound again, re-image the area. See exactly how well it works. Right? Not a biopsy, okay. no. Yeah, no, no, no biopsy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time you're having any sort of needle, <laughs> is they're taking it out. So okay. Hopefully, so. And what then if it didn't shrink? Would they still take it, take it out? Yeah, they so, still take so, it out. So this yeah. just help to help to control maybe the spread. Uh, yeah, no. Correct. Because okay. okay. the chemo is going everywhere, right? So if there's any little bits that have gotten out somewhere, then we're basically killing them off, you know, and that, that we can't see on the CAT scans or things like that. So that's chemo's working that way. And then the other way that's working is shrinking down the actual tumor itself. And in your case with this chemo regimen, the chances of it, what we call a pathologic complete response, which is, you may read, is called a PCR. And that's basically saying all cancer is gone. Okay. It's all gone. For this regimen, it's roughly between 50 to 65 percent. I'm getting rid of it completely okay. after that. Okay, that's not even counting, you know, the percentage of people that have just a shrinkage. You know, so the shrinkage is even higher. So yeah. it works really well for folks. Okay, and you know, I feel so. like I'm tolerating it fine, yeah. other than just like you know the normal. No, and th this is expected. You know, yeah. so you're tolerating it perfectly. And the study that looked at this chemo regimen. It's your exact age group. It's women in their late forties to early fifties that are on this chemo regimen. Okay. And we know that it does we can good. we can get it and we have a good chance of getting rid of it even completely actually after that. Oh that'd be great. Um, and then it's a much smaller surgery after that. Yeah. Um, depending on what the surgeon decides after that. So now what about the lymph nodes under the arm? Is that is I mean ha, is it I didn't get to know, was it just in one lymph node or a couple? So if you look back at your initial biopsy, let's go all the way Because the way I read it, it was only it. just one. Multiple, yeah. So good it's question. Multiple. So no, so they only biopsied one lymph node. And basically once we know it's in the lymph nodes, we don't typically try to go biopsy on other ones because, yeah, it we causes really more issues for people and side effects, but we already know it's in the lymph node. Okay. So our treatment doesn't change really as a result of that. Okay. Because we already know it's in the lymph node as a result of it. It gets you to the stage three, like we sort of, um, So really in this case, you know, the chemo is also working on those lymph nodes as well. And when I talk about the complete pathologic response, this is in the breast cancer mass itself and the lymph nodes together that makes up this response. Okay. So it's basically saying 50 to 65% of people got rid of all of their cancer. Basically, wow. yeah, okay. just with chemo, no surgery or anything like that, you know, or before surgery, I mean, um, before they went to surgery, essentially. So, so I think that that's a great number. That's probably the best number we've had in a long time, actually. Really? Yeah. So okay. it's, it's, this is a new chemo regimen probably within the last three, four years that we've developed. 
and works well and it gets good responses. And I've seen it work in other folks in your exact same situation and they get a good response. We take them to surgery, we get it out. And we're being very aggressive with it just because it's an aggressive case. So it'll so. never just go away if you have no surgery? Typically not. So yeah, okay. typically not for the most part, you know. So it's one of those cancers that, you know, if we sort of left it alone, it would grow just pretty fast. Yeah. yeah, it was growing pretty fast. Yeah, so and that's sort of the sort of how the triple negative breast cancer works is that out of the other ones, it's probably the more aggressive one that grows faster. So that's why we gotta be just as aggressive with it really as a yeah. result of it, so. Because most of the time the medicine works, it's just the people can't handle it, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. what gets them when you go back it off and tweak Correct. it. Correct, exactly. So that's the thing that with this regimen that it's one of the toughest regimens that we have for chemo and all different types of cancer types. Yeah. So it's tough. It's tough for people to get through. You've got to be young and healthy to really get through it, and you're young and healthy to get through it. Yeah. You know, and, but I have some folks that are in their 60s that, you know, have some issues with it. You know, you are young and healthy, and you are doing great with it right yeah. now. So exactly what I expect for someone of your age. So you're expecting, you know, like, some good stuff. I'm expecting some good stuff. With okay, you, so, yeah. good. Cardio place went yesterday. It's really fancy. You know, I didn't get to go back in there. But yeah. I mean, it's fancy area. It is, yeah. It's, oh, it's let's look at the so. results for that. Yeah, let me see. I think I, okay. yeah, looked good. So, it did? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, no so issues. chemo's not Chemo's affecting not affecting anything. anything. And it's mainly just more of a baseline test, really. Oh, that's um, right. She did say that. Correct. Because once we start the second part of the chemo that's where it involves the one chemo that may cause damage to your heart potentially so that's why we like to have a baseline if you haven't started that part yet that's at the three month mark when you would start that new chemo okay. that could potentially cause that then when you're on that then we repeat it three months after you finish that chemo okay just to make sure that you're not having issues or things like that so yeah okay. so far so good i'm pretty healthy i mean yeah you're I very healthy this. so yes um, so, yeah so okay. you, you, you guys are doing great. Good, thank you. Last question I have for you. Any neuropathy, numbs, tingling, hands and feet, anything like that? Nope, not Good. yet. All right. And I'm not a piss Love it. Good. <laughs> That'll work. Any other questions, concerns for me? What else? Okay. 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 Lizzie, so do you Wait, it's designed better. Do you? They all feel so similar to me. I can't. But it seems like this one's a little smaller. It might be. I don't know. <laughs> They're all the same, <laughs> right? They all like, run together. I just go where the people are. Yeah, that's right. I think that's in like a Disney show. I think you're go right. Go where the people are. <laughs> that should be if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what are them like? Did, did your access go okay? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. It was really good. She said it was good. The, the port. Oh, good. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, like just downstairs. Just yeah, getting, getting the blood out. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, everything went okay. Yeah. Oh, right. you, you're going to flush me? Yeah, I'm going to flush you. Get in your, get it in your goods. It tastes nasty. That's what I was going to say. That's why I But I'm that's gonna... good. Get something in your mouth. Yeah. That's the way to do it. We're in no rush. That's, that's what those uh, you mints are for. Are these the ginger ones? You want to try one? Yeah, they're, they're spicy yeah. a little. I've had them. They're pretty good. <laughs> Oh, I've had well, those. Well, at first they were like that once, I thought, but I think you're kind of used to it. It's like, nah. Yeah. Everybody's different, and I'm glad you like them. Somebody needs to buy them. Somebody sent them, and I was like, that's right. Like, uh, I didn't like them at first either, but now nah, it's growing. Yeah. 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 I do like ginger, though. I mean, I like ginger in food. Is ginger always spicy like that? It's It's got a bite, yeah. I bought really? it because it's a root, and I didn't know that. Hey, okay, guys, do you want a drink, snacks, lunch yes. box? What would you like? A blanket? Yeah, that's yes. a for sure, yes. She said yes, yes. You got me at blanket. Okay. Well, uh, a Diet like? Coke would be good. Diet Coke. Please, 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 please. Diet Coke. Yeah, What's in the boxes? The great it's, um turkey sandwich, <gasps> chips, yes. fruit cup, cookies. Yes. Sign yes. us up. Oh, well, yes. yeah, yeah. I, I've been walking down the cure theory. I didn't even know. Oh, yeah, we got those. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. just have them. <laughs> um, and Diet Cokes. Do you want ice? Cups of ice? Would yes, you? please. Diet Cokes. I don't need one. Just, cut just out of fridge. Thank you. So I want to get your goodies and then um, we'll get your pre-meds going. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm here in the um, chemo part and I got my things in here. It's all hooked up. Got my little... There's Mr. Christine. Wave. Mr. Christine. Everybody's always asking about Mr. Christine. 
So we're here now and we are settling in. Um, our nurse is fantastic. She, we love her to pieces. She is um, getting us a blanket, Diet Coke, and lunch. So, all right. So this is the update so far. I only and that's it. See you in a bit. This is the complimentary um, box lunches that they give you here at the uh, cancer center when you're getting chemo just to make it easier for your transition while you're um, getting your chemo treatment. It is turkey sandwich, chips, a little um, fruit cup and a little um, dessert and a Diet Coke. So it's very nice of them. It's very helpful for someone who's getting chemotherapy. They don't have to worry about dragging in all their food and stuff like that. They're very accommodating. So they are doing a great job here at the cancer center. And I mean, how nice is that? They even got us lunch. It's perfect. So, all right, I'm going to eat this lunch. And um, she ordered the meds for us. So the next time you see me, I will be getting the first round of chemo in. Sure. But I think that this probably is very therapeutic for yes, you. And you're is. helping others and, and that speaks volumes to the type of person you are. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. I I'll really... tell you, the first day was rough. Mm. And you, you know Matthew, the past pastor. Yeah, Matthew, his office in. is right next to mine. I love Matthew. Oh, I know. He's, he's so amazing. Nice. Yeah. He's amazing. We are so lucky to have him. Well, I'll tell you, the first thing that, yeah. the thing out of the whole week, he probably spent maybe two hours with us. Oh. And the thing that stuck out to me the most yeah. about him yeah. was he said one thing. Mm -hmm. Well, not one thing, but like one mm -hmm. couple sentences. Mm -hmm. That stuck out about the whole thing was your emotion. You can only hold an emotion for 20 minutes then you know it's going to change mm -hmm. so it's just focus on getting through that 20 minutes mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. you know whatever, whatever is yeah. causing you to get upset or mm -hmm. whatever your that feeling will change within the 20 minutes mm -hmm. so i thought that was that's powerful powerful yes that's yes. exactly so. yeah and Aww. it gives you a little bit of hope like okay so i'm feeling upset and anxious now but mm -hmm. i know that in 20 minutes yeah. i'm going to be yeah. you know something else is going to cause me to get distracted yeah to change my to yeah. change my mood, yeah. so I loved Aww. that he. I hope he says that to everybody. Oh, I'm, is it okay if I share yeah, that with him? Because I think yes. that would make his day. Yeah, yeah. She's, I mean, she's always worried about everybody else. Yes, and that's the problem. I yes. mean, even he, he brought that out to everybody else. She's always worried about letting somebody else down, or sure. you know what somebody else thinks. Yeah, and then she's always done that, and then and she's working on something at work. She'll stay up all night. I mean, Aww. what do you uh, advocate high for? Yes, high for. and I think yeah. that there's something to be said about exercise releasing yes. endorphins, yeah. and and, and, and it is good nature. for your yeah. emotional and mental well being. Yeah, so. and I have type two diabetes. Yes. And I used to take about six shots a day mm -hmm. with the Levomir, which is the long lasting, mm -hmm. and Humalog, which mm -hmm. is the short lasting. Yeah. So, what I've, I actually did some research, because that's another thing I'm good at. Um, and I learned mm -hmm. with diet and exercise, mm -hmm. um, you could possibly, you know, reverse. Yes, reverse yes. or even control your insulin mm -hmm. and not have to take that mm -hmm. by diet and exercise. So what I did was I dived into it probably mm -hmm. about what two and a half years ago, well, three years ago, somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I have not for three years had to take a, a shot of anything. You are my so cholesterol. Oh, oh, even that. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> and I lost lots of weight too. Good yeah, for she you. Twenty or thirty since you've been sick in the winter. Uh, you know, but she was getting so low. I was like, "Come on, you got to quit now. You're getting too low." But uh, yeah. but the diet, we get yeah. we get a figure one. Yeah. And that guy wanted to put a book, maybe do a book because she was such a role model person. Oh yeah. You know, he's like, "Damn, you're like the perfect person." You know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Dr. What's his name? Are you're not still actively trying? To no. Lose Good. No. We don't want not you doing that during treatment. Yeah. That's no. that's why I'm like, because yeah. food tastes like just. I, like this chip has yeah. no taste, yeah. and I, I know it does. Yes. Yeah. And she yes. doesn't drink her coffee in there and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Oh, I live for my coffee, but Your my coffee is like. Your body needs the fuel now more than ever. You know, you gotta, you know, um, 
support your immune system and and the better you can maintain nutrition through this but it kind of helps um, kind of lessen the severity of the side effects from the treatment yeah um, and it'll be important too prior to surgery and and after surgery to really maintain good nutrition so like before I would have taken the bread off of this mm -hmm. and not eat it mm -hmm. but I know mm -hmm. but the thing about it is that I'm eating the bread on it because I know that you, tomorrow yeah. and the next couple other days so smart. I'm not gonna be wanting to have yeah. that yeah so I'm gonna get the carbs in yeah, now absolutely and then when that's a healthy approach not you don't want to be so strict yeah yeah, Plus yeah. I, I take think advantage of the good there. days you know, yes take advantage of the good yeah. days well I am going to share this little tip sheet on yeah I love tips me. Um, just some tips. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you the vegetables <laughs> kicking in a little bit. Like, tips are good. <laughs> so these are kind of food choices for times of intense nausea vomiting um, that I think you kind of, you know. Um, well, what do you recommend? Uh, so. Like, what's, what is your patients are like, you know what, this works. Yeah, I want that. Yeah, I'm going to do this. You know, Thank you. Um, obviously, when you're feeling extremely nauseous, more room temperature or cold foods, things without strong odors. Yeah. Like dry, uh, starchy, uh, bland foods like the pretzels, the saltines, the crackers, um, uh, toast, um, just things that are kind of easy on the stomach in yeah. little tiny amounts, but kind of like you're grazing and sipping, just like with a one cracker at a time. Um, I think they would love to have that information. Right. We're always looking for people to teach in the kitchen or do programming for us. Okay. We are partnered with Cancer Support Community and Cancer Family Care. We have licensed counselors that does therapy for families, children affected by cancer, couples, whoever. So that's available. We do um, acupuncture. We have a massage therapist that is... Wow. Um, been specifically trained Is to treat Bill? no Allison Reynolds. She's um, trained to treat cancer patients, so she'll come up to um, the infusion suite and do a hand massage on Aww. patients. We also have a music therapist that comes up and, and serenades and plays the guitar and sings to patients. We have some amazing things, so uh, you should check it out. Yeah, and okay. I think you would love even come into some of the cooking classes. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Especially if it's uh, if she makes the keto smoothies with berries. Oh, awesome! Uh, do you know that um? Yeah. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. I love protein powder. Do you powder. do smoothies every day? Not since okay. I've taken, but I did before chemo. Yeah. yeah. But be, after yeah. chemo, I you know because you have to. It takes there's so many steps to make a smoothie. Um, she would have so many I, in the freezer. In the yes. Freezer. Yeah. And I would just stick yeah. them in the microwave for like yep. a minute mm -hmm. 20. Yep. And it mm -hmm. softens it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of eat it like a, like an icy. Yeah. I would say that's my biggest tip that I think for people struggling to get their calories in that are, you know, I see all the head and neck patients, cancer patients here. So and they have problems with swallowing. And so smoothies are, you know, easy to swallow. You can pack a lot of nutrition, a lot of calories, a lot of protein Plus you can into put, them. You can put the spinach in there and you won't yep. even know it's there. That's what we do all the time. Yeah. And then we've even made smoothies down there and then brought them up and passed them around to people oh, up here. Um, sometimes we'll use the high calorie inchers and boost in the smoothies for people that really got to get those calories in just to show them, hey, you might not like the way this tastes right from the bottle, but yeah. you can mix it up it and you can. Smoothie. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, it's been so nice to talk yes, to you guys. I'll let you get back to eating. Thank you. But yeah, come down and check our department out sometime when you're up to it. Yes. Yeah. Do you, uh, is there hours, certain days? You just uh, get on the website? Monday through Friday. Um, you can come down and just you know, um, you know, meet Amanda at the desk and okay. someone can give you a tour. Any of us can give you a tour. Um, and then you can ask to talk to Michelle and share some of these people, you yeah. know, maybe connect her with some of these people. Look on your my chart. I am okay. certain that I saw she reached out and her name sent a referral to our integrative department as well as to nutrition specifically. Oh, he, yeah. Yeah, he said, he said, yeah, yeah, he was going to try to reach out because he thought she'd be good. Cause she's oh, good my, people. oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and when you feel up to it, I um, connected with another breast cancer survivor who's a school teacher who has kind of become vegan but does a lot of plant-based eating. She loves to cook. She came and taught a few classes for us. And Is she the one? I, I just thought, what better to have someone that has been there and, you know, and just like you're helping people. Yes. It's like you're giving back and, like, sharing those tips yeah. and everything. So. I just want to make it so it's an easier, smoother transition mm -hmm. for someone. So maybe at some point in your journey, when you kind of get through all of this yucky stuff, you you know, we'd love to have you as well. You know, okay. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Nice to meet nice you both. You. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye.
Okay, so I just got done talking to the nutrition counselor here at the Cancer Center. So it was a very good conversation. She kind of knew some people I knew. And um, so, yeah, they invited me down to do their demonstration kitchen and talk to some few people um, to get involved. So good, good. But so my chemo treatment is ready to... Um, be put in. The nurse has got a couple other patients as well besides just me. So we will wait for that. Um, it's made directly in the lab as soon as I come in and check in. Um, it's made the, the same day. This, the moment that it's done, it is given, um, they've given the order to make it. So it's made in-house on the spot in their personal lab that they have here at the cancer uh, center. So taking good care of us. See you at the next step, which is the um, putting in the chemotherapy uh, chemicals. All right, see you in a little while. We were doing the purple lights on. Purple light means that my uh, chemotherapy treatments have been delivered. They've been made from the lab and now they've been delivered and they're in. There, put in this box right there, and they have to be locked up. And two nurses come in and make sure that all the information's right and that we're getting what we're supposed to get. So, good times. We're beeping, we're beeping. Oh, there she comes. Let's see her. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to take care of this FMLA. I know. I'm so trying to. I got you, and you only have so long to do it, you know. It's annoying it can be because you can't relax until that paperwork is actually taken care of, so. All right. Good luck. Yeah, let's see here. Hey. You're here. So you didn't miss it. The big changer. Yes, yeah, telling her I'm trying to take health care of my FMLA. Yeah. That is a beast. That is a, a beast in itself. Oh, yeah. And not only is that, then you got to do with the short term disability. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and then that's a beast <laughs> in itself, too. Oh, but once all that's taken care of, then you can like, just, just breathe. Yeah, yeah hopefully. It's true. Don't take that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me. First, I'll confirm this is all accurate. Yeah. Then I'll say, hey, can y'all go to break? Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Right. So it doesn't go in my port or anything. It's just no, a, it's an actual ingestion. You don't need or, yeah, no blood work. Ingestion. I'll just go like in the pudgy in the mm -hmm. back here. Pudgy back here. Okay. Pudgy leg, pudgy belly. Oh, okay. See how that works. So every 15 days is a cycle. Yeah, well. Looks like. It's every, so because... Because we're on day 15 today, but then there's 16, 17, and 18 for those three injections. Oh. You start all over. And it's a 21 day. So there's injection, injections in that cycle. Right. Okay. Right. So it looks like day 15 is the last day of chemo in the cycle. So then. Day 18 is the end of the actual cycle. Inje yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you get the three inje injections, one, two, 16, and 17, and 18 on okay. those days of, the, of any given cycle. 
Okay. So day one, day eight, day 15, this is your chemo. 16, 17, and 18 are the injections to help your white cells come up. Okay. Because your body's had so these three they, weeks So they really try to break your body down, and then they try to put the white fat cells up, so they're kind of like giving you kind of like vitamins and steroids and stuff and, and in between. Yeah, because what this stuff does is it attacks fast multiplying cells in our body. Yes. And our white cells are... are Good ones. Blood cells, they multiply fast too. Uh, and so it doesn't recognize this chemo in particular, doesn't recognize, oh, that's cancer cells that are multiplying fast and that's our immune system cells multiplying uh, fast. So we know this is going to delete, you know, diminish those. So yeah. then we want to make sure we replenish those. So okay. if you didn't do that, she'd so get real weak and her, her immune system would drop to nothing. So you'd yeah. keep it built up. Yeah. So then your next actual chemo start date, start. Your next cycle, January 10th. Okay. Which is next Wednesday. Oh, that's next Wednesday. Oh, that, yeah, jeez. Oh, yeah. Can yeah. you believe that? No, no, I cannot. No. And that now next week is when I get all three. The two chemo and the immune oh, immunity. Immunotherapy. Yeah. Let's take a peek at your plan. See how then we cheat. Yeah. Look at your plan. No, that's how it's supposed to. Yeah. That's, exactly that's what it's right. for. It's a cheat sheet. Got it. So mm -hmm. day one, cycle two, we'll look in here under chemo. And there it is. There's your key treater, that's your immunotherapy. You get your taxol and you get your carbo plan. Okay. So it'll be the three. You'll get the three. Okay. And that's just on the day one of when your cycle starts. Okay. So, so that then, that's cycle two. And that's cycle two. Okay. All right. Does Thank that make you. sense? Yep, I got it. I got it in there now. Once right. it's in there, it don't come out. You're gonna have to teach <laughs> me your tricks. <laughs> so. It's getting it in there. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's so many different ones for everybody's got different different types of cancers, different things going on in their bodies. Yeah. Now this one's like the uh, the one I'm getting is pretty aggressive, aggressive pretty. treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what your cancer is is, is, is needing. Yeah. yeah. Now, Taxol 160 with our funny tubing and our filter. Okay. Hi. Have you had it before? Yes. And no problems? Yeah. This is my third treatment. Right. You want to try one of these? Oh, yeah. You want one? It's a ginger lemon. No. <laughs> Thank you. She, no. was, she was ex interested first until I said ginger. She's like, I'm out of here. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, what can I get for you? Anything? You need anything? Yep. No. So what's this one doing? This is your taxol. This is one hour. Oh, that's the taxol. Mm -hmm. That's the big one. It's the one hour, yeah. At least we're getting it in first. Yeah, it goes first. Then your carboplatin's the 30 minute, and it's next, and then you're done. Okay. Okay. So the taxidine or taxine or whatever it is has been put in. The taxol has been put in and now we wait for about an hour for it to start working or for it to go in. It's in a on a drip bag. I'll show you. On a drip bag. So this is gonna be an hour's worth. Every all the staff and everybody are very friendly, very accommodating and it's very comforting to know that you're in good hands. So right, that's it. Have it till the next one. There's another one in about an hour or so that needs to be put in, and that's that one's only gonna be half an hour. So, all right, see you in a little bit. Oh, I'm following you around with the. Come <laughs> <laughs> like, here, <laughs> honey. <laughs> we still gotta get our double check before I hook you up, but I do want to put a little gadget on there. No, I, I take that back. I do still feel a little, yeah, a little bit, a little wonky. Yeah, but not much, just a little. She don't drink her diet, so I can tell right away. Yeah, good, good. You're lightweight. Yeah, I'm oh, way yeah. lightweight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, can I, let me grab a set of ice. Okay. <laughs> Take it. Okay, so now I've got my second um, chemo going in. And we should be finished in about half hour. All right. See you in a little bit. More and we have 
will be going to the appointment to see the surgeon. Okay. We're all on the same page here. Um, and I'm going to just start by saying I'm never happy to find this, but I'm glad you found it. Yeah. So there are things about it that are good. Um, we have three kind of general principles and then some, some you know, specifics. The first general thing is this isn't appendicitis, but we've already gotten started, so we don't have to worry about delays. The point is, even the worst things we ever see don't change in a six or eight week period. It's great that we got started, but it wasn't because it was going to explode and spread all over you while it was happening. So take a deep breath as we go through this. Okay. Um, you're going to get advice from everybody. You know. We should get through the scary stuff. I know you've already heard about a lot of it. And you're going through it now, but um, uh, the, the scary stuff should be pretty much over. Okay. The three details are your breast, your body, and your family. Now the family one, about one out of ten of these things, maybe slightly more than that, are hereditary. That means there's a gene in the family that causes them. People that have a gene for this are prone to getting it again on either side, places like ovaries or lining of the abdomen, prostate in men, pancreas, melanoma. If there's a gene in play, kids or brothers and sisters have a 50% chance of that same gene. If there is no gene, you just paid for Christmas, all right? That's a, a wonderful phone call to make. It's a gift of love to everybody. Mm -hmm. Have you done the testing for that? Are you going to get that done? Yeah, they they contacted me, but they didn't get back right. with me. We'll, we'll, we'll get that all the way Sorry, just sent them message. That's an important thing for you. It's going to man it's going to help us decide what to do in the operating room because only one out of ten turn up to have something there, but the ones that do, it explains why you got this. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a gift of love. Do you have kids? Oh, yeah, three boys. Yeah, well, they can carry Air that Force. Too. Oh, well, thank you. God, that's great. Thank you. All three in the Air Force? Just the two. Uh, well, and the older one's good. married. And... Well, all three of them would like to know. Yeah. When it comes to breast. That's, we, we have two operations we offer people. One of them is a mastectomy, which nobody wants. One of them is a lumpectomy, which we much prefer. They are equivalent outcomes. They have the same survival and they have the same recurrence rate. They come back where they start at the same exact number. So I'll show you what we have so far. But what I have right now isn't what I'm going to have when you're done with this. Okay. You ever know anybody had their tonsils out? Yeah, me. So when you had strep throat, they didn't take your tonsils out, right? You right. kind of sew them, they shrink them down to raisins, and they take your tonsils out later. Yeah. That's what you're doing right now. Okay. Shrinking down. So we got a right breast, and then we have left breast. And you can see the difference here. Um, there's a density that's developing here. We have a little bit of skin thickening compared to the other side because of those lymph nodes under the arm. Yeah. So they kind of had a sense of what this was going to be the minute they saw you. That that's what he said. They did an ultrasound, and those are to look for solid things. And they're a great way to look for solid things in young lady breasts. And this isn't like just kind of a one sort of amorphous thing it's just kind of a blob in that same general area but that measured out at about not quite two inches in size um, now the point is this is operable right now i can take that out but we like to shrink these things for a couple different reasons and one of them but not the least of which is it makes it smaller so i do less to you and leave a perfect looking breast perfect one over done but maybe more importantly what's happening in your breast is a window into what's happening elsewhere if this stuff disappears in your breast guess where else it's gone away Hold on. So the surgery is, as we always say, for the red's batting lineup, to be determined, right? So the, the lymph nodes, now that we know it's in the lymph nodes, that's is that like a red flag? Um, it's not a red flag. It's a reason to be a little more aggressive, but you already crossed that threshold. So okay. the most important thing here is treat our whole body. Breast, you're not a placeholder for a breast, right? You're, you're a person, you're a mom and a wife and the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So every lady that comes through here, we try to find a way to get you to be 90 years old. And some of the considerations we have are age or medical problems, of which you don't have any. Tumor size, this was medium, it's not huge. Lymph nodes, which are important, but they're not the end of the world. Three other factors here are basically the combination to your safe or the key to your lock, whatever numbers we want to talk about. These were all three negatives, so that's why this is called a triple negative cancer. Now, okay. The good news is you don't have to take pills for this. There will not be any hot flash pills or things like that that cause weight gain. Um, the bad news is you're doing chemotherapy for it. This is a chemosensitive tumor. So the first decision that was being made has already been made and, and enacted, and that is whether or not there was any role for chemotherapy. And the answer to this was a screaming yes. 
the reasons to do this. First of all, we shrink the tumor. There's no surgery that's harder when the lump is smaller. They're looking for something called a pathologic complete response, that breast vaporizing, because if it vaporizes, it has a prediction of not having anything anywhere else either. Those are our cures. And the treatment that you run, it seems like we either hit grand slams or we hit a ground and pelvic. So it either really, really works or we do okay, but it, uh, we're gonna watch this as time goes on and make sure that it's getting better. Okay. It also allows us to get our genetics back so that when the surgery comes, we do one operation. The last thing in the world we want to do is be cutting on you all the time. We want to be efficient with time and life and money and the whole nine yards on this. Halfway through this, I'm going to be back to see you. Do we know how long halfway is? Do they tell you how long the chemotherapy process is going to be? Uh, it's 20 weeks. So at 10 weeks, which is what, not quite three months, you're going to be back to see me. And we will go over this again. You don't have to remember any of this stuff. Okay. We'll go over the genetics. We will make sure it's getting smaller. We'll talk about surgery. But um, the point of the, the visit then is to make sure it's getting small. So that, that if we just took your lump out today, we'd have no way of knowing how well it works. Yeah. So it's sort of like throwing a roast in the oven and leaving for the day. You could come home and it could be perfect, or it could be an ice ball, or it could be to a crisp. There's no way to know unless you check on it. Yeah. This is really important. The other thing is, the surgery part, I have less lymph nodes too. I'd like to take less out from your arm, but that all sterilizes. I don't want to clean out your armpit. You'll hate me the rest of your life. If you're 90 years old, you'll hear my name is spit on the ground. <laughs> so we'd like to be efficient with this stuff, okay. all right? So you got your port already in place, the treatment's underway. Halfway through here, I wanna see you, and then we'll talk, if you have an MRI, we'll do one um, sort of in planning for down the road. Okay. Um, if he hasn't done one now, I really don't care until we get to making surgical decisions because um, the one that really matters to me is the one before surgery. And your mammogram isn't that dead, so if we were tired of scans and stuff, I think you could wait a little bit. Okay. All right. This will be an important visit for us when we meet halfway through, but so far so good, you're in good hands. The genetics is a gift of love to everybody here, otherwise knock this thing out apart, make it get smaller, and we'll go from there. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Where did my little calendar go? I've 10 weeks, but then you've already had three weeks in. I've got 20 weeks. Well, 10 weeks would be halfway, because oh, okay. you said 20 weeks, but you yeah. already have yeah, three 12, weeks 12 in. 12 of the first one, eight of the second one. Uh, so where are, where are we today? January 3rd, so yeah. that's a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So halfway is the end of February. Okay. Okay, so we are done for today. It is 4.38. Um, we actually had a extra appointment added. So we had to go to the genealogy department to see if I have the cancer gene. Um, if it tests positive for the cancer gene, then that is going to change my plan. If I test negative, it's, anything, whatever it tests is going to change what the plan is going to be. So it's important to get the genealogy testing. If you can't pay for it, they do have like a, oh, it's kind of like a scholarship program or a hardship program that you can apply for. If you do, if you can't afford it and your insurance doesn't pay for it, but it's good for you to have that for your kids, for your grandkids, you know, future people so that they know what to do. I mean, you should always self-care and, uh, and keep up on all of your appointments, but it also is helpful to know if you do have the genes so that your kids and your grandkids can know too. Um, and it will whatever it says will determine what my plan will be next. Um, the echogram came back great. Everything's fine. My platelets are still good. White blood cells are good. Red blood cells are good. Everything's good. Right on chart. Um, so that's good. But it, platelets do dip and then they'll, they'll go back up. So it... Um, so that could be what was causing the nosebleeds, he said. So now, tomorrow, which is Thursday, and then Friday, and on Saturday, I have to come back to the hospital, 
which we live 45 minutes away from, and get, uh, it's, it's, I'm not sure what the name of it is, I'll tell you when I look at the paper, but there's, it's a infusion to increase my white blood cells because, you know, the chemo treatment is tearing them, white, attacking the white blood cells and tearing them down, and they can't tell between cancer and good cells. So the this and these three infusions are going to be building my white blood cells back up. So I did not realize that was in the plan, but it is now. So um, so hey y'all, we're on our way home.